Uh, my name is Dana Severson. I'm one of the commissioners of the Prospect Heights Natural Resources Commission. This is my fellow commissioner. Agnes Wojnarski. And uh, we're here today to give you a video tour of the Prospect Heights Slough. So first a little bit of uh, information about the slough. Um, if you look at this map, you can see that, that the slough is located um, just off of Elmhurst Road and it's uh, bounded by Hillside Avenue and by Marion and Maple and then Willow Road to the north. So this would be south, uh, west, and east. Uh, if you also look at the map, you'll see that there are nature trails and there are boardwalk that run through the entire facility. Um, this map is available on our website and it's um, a, a good download and it gives you a, a, a precise location of all the trails that go through the park. And that's what we're going to take you through today. Okay, so when we started the restoration, we uh, wanted to know what the history was of the, the land um, around the slough. And what we did was we looked at old historical maps. So there are uh, eight, the first maps that were drawn in, 18, in the 1840s show exactly what was here before settlement. And so we found the map with the area, and it does contain a slough, meaning that this slough has been here probably for thousands of years since the glaciers retreated. Um, and so that was really important to know that, that it wasn't just a man-made wetland, that it was actually here, uh, and that it was sort of a remnant wetland that could be restored. It's also had a very tumultuous history of people trying to pave it over, uh, fill it in, build houses on it, arguments with park districts and cities, and um, it just it has a really tortured history. But at the end of the day, it's always been citizens who have uh, rallied together and saved it. And protected it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, so when we first started the commission, it was 2014. And uh, at that point in time, the uh, slough was completely engulfed in buckthorn, invasive buckthorn. This is a, a photograph of Hillside Avenue, uh, which you'll see later on in the tour. And this buckthorn was 45 feet deep down to the water from the road. Uh, if you were standing anywhere on a road surrounding the slough, you wouldn't be able to see the water whatsoever. It took us two and a half years of working every other Sunday to alleviate all of the buckthorn, and we were yeah. really surprised at what came up. Right. And what buckthorn does is it chokes out everything. It doesn't allow anything to grow underneath in the understory, so it also contributes to erosion. It secretes a chemical called emodin that kills amphibian embryos. So if you have a wetland with buckthorn around it, you don't have a lot of frogs because they're being killed by this uh, chemical that's secreted by buckthorn. So it was really important to remove this nasty invasive species from around the slough. And when we did so, we saw this complete increase in all of this vegetation that had been just waiting there in the shade of this buckthorn to come back. Uh, we also saw an incredible amount of frogs and birds and everything else coming back after taking out that invasive. Right, and um, so part of the, uh, the way we, that we monitor the success of what we're doing is we monitor the wildlife, um, the birds, the bees, the uh, butterflies, uh, insects, fish, turtles, and, and use that as a gauge to how well the habitat is doing. Um, we've also battled with, um, and if you look out there, you'll see uh, cattails and you're going to see actually an area that has been restored as well. So this is an area where we've pushed back on um, the cattails and Agnes can tell you exactly what's been planted out here. Right, well actually a lot of these, uh, this river bulrush that's out here came back on its own once the cattails were removed and then we scattered the seeds of all the swamp milkweed which is normally what would have been found here naturally occurring. Um, and there's cord grass out there and just a number of different sedges. So there's probably close to 30 species of biodiverse plants instead of just a hy just a, the hybrid cattails. Um, I should also mention too that um, the start of this restoration happened in 2014 and um, the funding source for this was a, a Green Regions grant from Commonwealth Edison. Um, that at that point in time, it was a $20,000 grant, and um, it was to be split to start the restoration here at the slough, but also in the creation of the five-acre uh, Comed Prairie of, over on Elmhurst Road. Most recently, they've installed um, this offspring pole here. Uh, this went in in the spring, and uh, so far, no offspring. We did have one sitting up there looking around, uh, 
but um, we anticipate that uh, next year because we've seen them all the time now fishing uh, day and night doesn't matter what time there's somebody there fishing all the time so hopefully we'll uh, have offspring here relatively soon so I think what we're gonna do is um, <clears throat> Take a walk. We're going to take a walk, and we're going to go on to the um, uh, to the trail over towards uh, Hillside, and uh, Agnes and I are going to show you what we've uh, done over there. Okay, so uh, here's the start of the nature trail as we come out of the Isaac Walton Pavilion, and all the nature trails are marked with these signs. Mm -hmm. You can see this uh, beautiful oak here on the left. Um, this. This oak was struggling until we opened up the canopy, what, three years ago? Yes, three years and ago. And it has absolutely just prospered. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. So this little plant over here, this is called button bush. It's a native shrub that actually came back. This used to be just a thicket of buckthorn, but this, this button bush has been here and has since come back. It's a really nice native wetland shrub. And that's been sort of the most interesting thing about this whole restoration is that once the buckthorn was gone, and again, the it, buckthorn chokes everything out. It spreads, uh, it's a diuretic, so birds eat the seeds and spread them like crazy. Um, it spreads through rhizomes and it just, it, it takes out everything, absolutely everything. Um, so once that's gone and then there's the ability to have light, air and water, all kinds of things that are in that native seed bank just come roaring back. And this button bush is one of those guys. Mm -hmm. So right behind you here is the start of the boardwalk. And uh, this boardwalk was installed as part of our fourth Commonwealth Green uh, Regions uh, grant. Um, this was an Eagle Scout project by um, Eagle Scout candidate Felix Weirich. And uh, <coughs> Felix um, uh, was instrumental in uh, making this happen. Uh, there's 480 feet of boardwalk in an area that was probably impassable 65% um, of the time because of the water. And now uh, you can see, if you look on this bush here, the swamp milkweed, the look swamp at all milkweed. the pollinators that are on just that single um, swamp milkweed. It's amazing. So there's a spur here. There's benches that are built into the boardwalk everywhere for people to sit and enjoy it. <clears throat> um, again, this is an area that is... Uh, under restoration. Um, we're uh, currently pushing back the cattails. And this entire area, Agnes is gonna tell you about this, yeah. this entire area right so here. There is another invasive um, that was here other than buckthorn. It was, it's reed canary grass and I'll show you one, but the interns have done a really good job of setting it back this year. This whole area was just 100% reed canary grass. Nothing else was growing here except for that invasive grass, which is not from here, it's from Eurasia. So it doesn't support all of the wildlife. It doesn't support the monarch butterflies that you see flying above right now. And so we took that reed canary grass out and a lot of these actually came back on their own. So there's lake sedge in here, there's calamagrostis. All of those plants came back on their own from just taking that reed canary grass away. And then we also supplemented with uh, seeds of swamp milkweed that were locally collected and other really nice species. So right now there's about 60 species of native wetland plants instead of just one monoculture of reed canary grass. And you can, you can see the biodiversity is paying off when you see all the pollinators that are buzzing this right now. Um, I mean, everywhere you look, there's a butterfly, there's a dragonfly, there's a damselfly, there's uh, bees of bumbuses of all kinds, uh, honeybees doing their work. Um, this is, it's really just a special place to be, a special place to <laughs> just come and look. Um, off there in the far distance, as it parallels uh, Elmhurst Road, um, you'll see that there is a, um, there's every three feet, there's a Native American plum, Prunus Americana, or Americanus. And uh, they're every three feet. That was a donation from the Hinman family, um, the funding for that. And uh, so in, from this point forward, every spring, you're going to see from the uh, opening of um, Isaac Walton Pavilion down to the sign on the hillside, 300 feet is going to be just a, a complete glowing white um, uh, symphony of flowers from those plum trees. And then as, as the summer progresses, you're gonna be able to walk the Walgreens and pick plums and eat them on the way. 
Uh, Agnes is going to point out some right. of the different so plants here. We already saw the swamp milkweed. Um, this one is river bulrush. Out there is the dark green bulrush that we see over here. This is bone set. That's the bone set. And then this is the, though that's the blue vervain right there, that beautiful blue wetland plant. And then all of these are obedient plant, which will be flowering in about three or four weeks. It's that's called an obedient plant because if you move the flower on the stem, it will stay where you put it. Yeah. It's really an interesting phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Um, what you see right in front of you there is um, a catalpa tree, and there are three of those. They're natives uh, to um, southern Illinois. These came in on their own, what, Agnes, about three years ago, four about, years ago? Yes. Um, just showed up for work, and they've been here ever since, and they're doing extremely well, so we've left them. <laughs> this is a native senna uh, plant. Um, it's just about to flower. It's just going to have the showiest yellow flowers, which is great for pollinators. And unfortunately, we have a little bit of reed canary right behind it. So this is the culprit that took over. Uh, we've been working on trying to eliminate it. So that's just a tiny little patch that we didn't get to this year. I have to point out, it's, um, this is a really spectacular place to come and look at clouds. Um, uh -huh. This is a tributary A. This is the main feed into um, the slough and to Hillcrest Lake. We have uh, lovingly renamed this Possum Creek um, in honor of a possum we found at uh, one of the work days. So here, here's a couple of cool plants. So this is the water parsnip, a Syme suave. And this is an interesting plant because it could be terrestrial or aquatic, so it can live in water or on land and this is a really nice little wetland plant and right next to it this is a false nettle bulmeria cylindrica another typical plant that you would see in wetlands oh and right in front of it we have little golden alexanders too and that's already going to seed hmm. nice this is another area that has um, been restored this was all cattails and uh, we pushed back on those cattails continue to push back on those you can see there's a few that are popping up uh, this weekend we'll be wicking a lot of these that are invading the areas we've already reclaimed. Um, you'll also see a lot of um, these uh, maple trees that uh, have managed to secure themselves a position. Uh, those will all be coming out as well. These are just um, silver maples that are a dime a dozen everywhere. And if you just leave them, they'll simply take over. On the left, this um, swamp white oak here. Uh, was there, um, we just finished a project with the Morton Arboretum, their 100-year uh, tree centennial. Uh, for their 100-year centennial, they planted, um, <clears throat> as part of the Chicago Tree Initiative, uh, they donated uh, 15 trees to uh, uh, the commission to plant here at uh, the SLU, and then they donated another seven uh, for the park district to plant in the pavilion area as well. So um, volunteers came together through their initiative and uh, planted all these um, it was a day that there was a lot of water and it was a real muddy mess, but you can see they're all doing great. So there's this um, one there, there's another swamp over here, and then there's two, three hackberries planted over in that area. And I think there's another hackberry up there. So we're leaving the boardwalk and you can see you're forced with some decisions. <laughs> so if you take the immediate uh, trail behind Agnes, you'll go right up to Hillside Avenue. And so that's also one of the entrances, there's several entrances uh, into the slough. And then if you take the one to your right, <clears throat> this parallels uh, Elmhurst Road and comes out by the creek. So um, this is a very different experience as well. It's more woodland. Um, it's, it's under the canopy for the most part. And then the trail behind us that we're going to take um, mm -hmm is a trail that uh, continues on and parallels uh, Hillside Avenue and comes out somewhere around Marion on Hillside Avenue. So that beautiful blue one over there is the tall American bellflower. It's actually a biennial, so every two years we see a nice little flush. It, yeah. And then this one over here, this is Joe Pieweed. It's got world leaves. It's a nice little woodland plant. So maybe one nice shrub I'll point out that's a native shrub is this elderberry. This is one of the shrubs that really came up um, 
when we remove the buckthorn, this is a nice uh, native. And these are all, it's already flowered, it's now going to seed, and these are going to be beautiful little berries. And the birds love them. It provides so much food, especially during migration. Now, um, up on, on Hillside Avenue, um, and pretty much all around the perimeter of the slough, we've installed riparian buffers to help absorb storm runoff and keep it there and filter it out and fit, uh, before the water actually gets into the slough. We'll be showing you those later, but right now we're just going to do the trails. So this is bottle brush grass. And you can see that the name because it looks like a bottle brush. It's also a nice woodland plant that we seeded into the area. We do all of our own prescribed burns here as well as all of our sites except for the Comed Prairie. And so part of the, um, the, the uh, task of getting this to burn really well has been the uh, introduction of um, grasses. native grasses to, because that's what the fuel is. Um, if you just have the plants, you know, in the fall, they're going to be stalks. Uh, they're not going to carry fuel very well, but so... Uh, grasses carry fuel The grasses very well. carry fuel very well. There's ryegrass, right? So one of the rarer plants that came back when we did the restoration are Michigan lilies. And so these are the Michigan lilies that came back, and they're actually a pretty conservative species. When we took out the buckthorn, there was one, and then the next year there was probably 10. And now there's about 50 of them all around the slough. That's cool. So that, we recently, this year, we took out, there's a, a buckthorn over here. So during the winter workday, we took out a lot of it. But now this year, what has arrived is that rose out there, which is actually our Illinois climbing rose, Illinois prairie rose, Rosa satigera. So that's a very nice native prairie rose. Well, that was just an example of how things just <laughs> arrive after you take away the invasives. And it also tells you that they've been here yeah, uh, from the beginning, probably. So now we're at the junction of Zeke's Trail. Um, Zeke is one of our youngest and oldest volunteers at the same time. <laughs> um, Zeke lives in the house right on the corner up there. Um, Zeke is uh, now, I think, seven years old. And he has been with us since he was in a harness on his dad's back when we were doing work days. And Zeke uh, pretty much lives here at the slough in the summer. And um, he's an amateur herpetologist. He knows everything about birds. He knows everything about everything. Snakes and And he asked if he could make his own trail to get down here easier and quicker. So we said, absolutely. And um, so uh, <coughs> he did that. And then we made a sign for him. It's called Zeke's Trail. So the funny part is, uh, we'll be over at uh, headquarters there working and people go by on the trail and say, who's this Zeke guy? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll just point out another really nice uh, woodland grass that we've had in the area. And so this is silky wild rye. And one of the ways that you can tell it apart even before it has the, the flowering spike is if you feel the underside of the leaf, it's velvety smooth. And so this is silky wild rye and just it's completely velvet underneath this leaf. It's a nice woodland grass. You may have noticed there's a lot of dead wood here. There's a lot of trees that have expired. Um, <clears throat> these are called snags. Uh, this is something that we consciously leave in place. As you can see by the size of that hole, that a cavity nester made that hole. And these trees, um, these snags, uh, this one over here is particularly loaded. This is a condominium, I think. Um, uh, you can see that um, all those holes. <laughs> All those holes is somebody's house. Um, we monitor these as a commission to make sure that they're still safe. At the point we think that there's a danger to the public, we'll go ahead and take them down. But as long as they can serve wildlife, we'll actually leave them up and just continue to monitor them. You can also see this guy laying on the ground. <clears throat> that actually is his job, is to lay on the ground. Um, where these snags fall, uh, once they're down, we let them uh, return back to the earth and they provide all kinds of uh, homes. Little, yeah, for hiding spots for snakes and little mice. And right, in addition to all the mycorrhizomes oh. and the fungi. There's a cardinal over there. And this is sort of ongoing every day. Um, this Lots is what happens when you change the, in, the habitat. You change the inhabitants and they come if you build it. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Now those are some Michigan lilies. Yeah. Those are That's this beautiful. It is beautiful. 
So this, this whole area was just one big thicket. You couldn't see from the house to the street. It was just all buckthorn. Yeah. And those Michigan lilies came on their own. It's really nice. Here we have a little bit more sun, so we're starting to see plants that thrive in sunnier areas like this gray-headed coneflower. It's just starting to flower. You'll see fields of it around here pretty soon. So now you can see the water. And if we had our binoculars, you'd see that there's a great blue heron sitting on uh, some of the habitat logs that we've dropped into the water. You can see further down, there's more uh, birds. Those are typically, could be wood ducks. Uh, they could be egrets, um, black crowned night herons, which are- Now um, nesting here. They're now nesting here. They're on the state endangered. Threatened list. The threatened list. And voila, there's civilization. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is a smathering, a healthy smathering of native willow uh, that we've left in place. Um, at one point in time, prior to the buckthorn onslaught, um, the slough was surrounded with these native willows. We have some historical photos. Here you can see uh, arrowroot is coming in. Arrowhead. I mean arrowhead, yeah. <clears throat> and then in the water, that is not algae, that is duckweed. Uh, duckweed is a two millimeter aquatic plant that has a, roots that hang down from it, much like a jellyfish, and ducks love it. Over on the far side there, that's the cattail area where we're pushing back. So we're, we're looking to probably remove another what, 50 feet of that mm -hmm. this year still? Um, we can see where it drops down and thins out going to the right. That's the area where we have restored uh, as part of the uh, grant, and that's now planted with uh, warrior sedges that are fighting back against and hopefully eventually will take over from those cattails. Um, again, it's a process. It takes a while. So it's a matter of going back in as the sedges progress and wicking the cattails mm -hmm. and knocking them back again and eventually you win and the sedges take over and that's pretty yeah. much it. The thing we do is we create <laughs> habitat. Um, so normally you would have trees falling into the water when they're dead and uh, a lot of people take those trees out but, but what you really should do sometimes is leave them in there. So not only do they provide a little bit of shoreline stabilization but they're great for the turtles. The turtles love to bask on them. And actually mm -hmm. two years ago when some of the ashes died across the slough, we asked Public Works if they wouldn't mind dropping a few into the slough for us and they did that. And literally the next morning there was 15 turtles lined up on that fallen tree basking in the sunlight. So habitat creation is also important. Yeah, you can see over there uh, against the shoreline there's mm -hmm. a, a mother duck with a bunch of babies moving to the uh, to the right there, going north. Now this is an area for some reason that we see a lot of the snakes that are here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this, this whole area um, has really been a boon to the snakes. And you can see out there, um, there's a, an egret fishing. Yeah, let's go closer to take yeah. a look. So I will also point out the invasives that can take over if you don't keep a watchful eye on them. This happens to be white sweet clover. It's a biennial plant as well. If we allow this to go to seed in this area, two or three years from now, it'll just be white sweet clover and it won't have any other plants. Now this is part of the um, shoreline restoration that we did at this area. This, was, uh, this is what the ComEd funded in the very beginning um, with money for plantings. <clears throat> and what do we plant here, Agnes? How much? We planted 7,206 plugs of native plants here for $10,000. And we said we can do a lot better than that, and so we started the greenhouse program. But this is all, um, this is the aquatic portion of the shoreline restoration. Um, and we, we actually had to put in carp exclosures. We have Queen so, of the Prairie. So this is a pretty rare plant that was purchased with some of that grant money. This is a queen of the prairie. It's in the rose family. It's one of the coolest looking uh, plants. It's really beautiful, quite beautiful. And you would normally see this in high quality wetlands and fens. You can see all the pollinators on it too. Oh, that's another really nice one. So this is a beautiful patch of Culver's root. And look at all those Veronica. pollinators. Culver's root for some odd reason is just like the number one main attraction for <laughs> pollinators. And you can go to virtually any stand of it and they're just swarming it. So the trail ends there and goes up to the street. So all of the plants that are in the water as part of the 
first line of defense. <clears throat> Those uh, aquatic plants prevent the uh, heavy wave action. wave action. When we get a lot of water, it moves fast through here and it co contributes to the erosion of the slough. And so by having those aquatics right at the shoreline, it prevents that wave action from eroding the land further. So it's a very, it's very, it's actually what you want, kind of a stepwise approach. So you have aquatic, semi-aquatic, terrestrial plants. There's some anarda starting to bloom over there. That's that lilac colored. It's in the mint family. Wild bergamot, otherwise known as wild bergamot. And then here are some black-eyed Susan. This is another really nice little plant. This is butterfly weed. It's actually a milkweed. Butterfly weed, really bright orange flowers. This uh, oak tree was planted as part of an Arbor Day celebration. It was actually uh, one that uh, Mayor Helmer presided over. It was uh, a bunch of Girl Scouts were here. Uh, that was, what, five years ago, or six mm -hmm. years ago? Yeah, something, something like that. Like that. Mm -hmm. So now you can get a good look at that turtle there. Yeah, but this is a really nice place to come out. It's sort of a little lookout to take a look at the slough. And the egret up on the shoreline. Everybody's fishing today. There's also an egret up in the tree. They tend to sit up there in great numbers. Some days you'll come and there'll be 20 of them out here fishing. You can see all the native bees, the bumbuses, that are working over this um, culver's root. There's two out there on that one. There's a couple over here. Those are all native uh, bumblebees. Um, so this ends the, um, the trail system on this side of Hillside. Um, what continues on to Willow Road is uh, very little land, and then we're uh, introducing riparian buffers here, to, again, to absorb the storm runoff uh, going into the slough. Um, so we're gonna go back over to the other side, and we'll take the trail north.